This is part two of 12-4 solutions, and we're looking at uh, reasoning using the diagram at the right. If you know the values of x and y, how can you find the measures of each numbered angle? Well, the thing is, as I pull back from my x, as I pull back here from x, I know that angle 1 is bigger than angle 2. So the measure of angle 1 is bigger than the measure of angle 2 because if if 1 is the same as x, and then angle 2 is half of x, okay? Now, you got to keep in mind, as I pull further back, angle 3 is going to be even less than both of those when I consider this. So angle 3 is going to be even less than those others. So Angle 3, however, when I'm looking at that, is going to be uh, big minus little divided by 2 once I know x and y. So those are my relationships when I'm considering this in this problem. Now, in 19, 20, and 21. Okay, in 19, I'm looking at this idea that I have 10 and this, and if I'm thinking about this circle, I have got a tangent and a secant. So a tangent is the outside times the entire length is equal to the outside times the entire length. So I've got 100 is equal to 36 plus 6x. So I subtract and I get 64 is equal to 6x, and I divide, and I'm going to take and find out that I've got 64 divided by 6, and I've got 64 divided by 6, I've got 10.7 is equal to x. So x is equal to 10.7. Now, if I look at this other one, I've got y squared is equal to 6 times 6 plus x. Now, this looks a lot like the last one, except now I've got x is equal to uh, 10.7. But I just answered this question. So y squared is equal to this. So that means y squared has to be the same as 10. So y is equal to 10. And we'll slide this up here. And call that good. Our next one in 20, I'm looking at this idea that this outside, 4 times 20, because that's the entire length, is equal to x squared. Well, this is 80 is equal to x squared, and the square root of 80 is 8.9. So x is 8.9. Okay, and now I know x is 8. Point, well, the square root of 80. Let's call. Okay, so now I'm looking at this here, and I'm looking at 8 times 8 plus y is equal to the square root of 80 squared, because that's the tangent. And now this is 80. This is 64 plus 8y. So 8y is equal to 16, and y is equal to 2. So I've got my y is 2. got my other. I'm going to make these smaller. And I'm going to do my last one here. Now here is a one like one we did earlier, and these two arcs are identical. That means this side and this side, this parts of the chord are identical, so that's five. And let's see if we can get that to draw easier, that this is five because those arcs are identical. And I know this is a right angle. So this is a right triangle, so I know 5 squared plus x squared is equal to 12 squared. This is 25 plus x squared is equal to 144. And I subtract uh, 25 from 144, and I get 119. x squared is equal to 119. So x is the square root of 119. And I'm going to put it that way because I don't want to round it. I'm going to use it in a chord, chord relationship next. I've got to find y, and we did this in the previous video. I've got y times the square root of 119. It's equal to 5 times 5. 
So I got y equals 25 divided by the square root of 119, and I got 25 divided by the square root of 119, and that's going to give me uh, 2.3 as my answer for y. So I got my y, I've got my x, and I can move on. And we're going to make these smaller so we can uh, use some space. Now in this next one, I'm talking about A, B, and C. Now there's a lot of stuff going on here, so pay attention to what's happening. I've got this angle, C, is the average of 110 plus 100. Okay, so that makes 105. I also know that this angle for A is half as big as the arc it intercepts. So A is equal to 100 divided by 2, which is 50. And B is for that same reason. B is intercepting that 110. B is equal to 110 divided by 2, which is 55. Okay, and that's all the three angles they asked me to find. So we're going to move on to our next problem. Now, each time we do something like this, there's always information they give us. That's the diameter. This half, this half is 180, so that makes this 120. That's 180 minus 60. Okay. And this half is 180, so angle B is 180 minus 110, which is 170. Not 170, it's 70. So 70 degrees is B. And angle A intercepts that, so A is half of that 70 degrees. Oh, I lied. A isn't that 70 degrees. A is intercepting the 110. And, I've, and angle B is this angle. So let's back that up. Let's talk about the two things. First, let's go to A. A is half of 110 because that's the arc it intercepts, and A is 55 degrees. Let's go back to that 70. 70 is this, this green arc, and they want angle B. And B is half of 70, which is 35 degrees. Now, my last thing is C. They want C, but it's going to be tricky. This is 120 degrees, same as this arc. And now I've got two angles that are the same because that's an isosceles triangle because the radiuses are the same. So I've got 180 minus 120 divided by 2, which is 30. So my angle C is 30 degrees. Now 24, 25, 26 is working with sine, cosine, and tangent review. So standing on X, I've got opposite hypotenuse. And remember, I got SOHCAHTOA. Okay, so I've got sine of x, inverse sine of x. Okay, I'm looking for that x degree, so the inverse sine is opposite over uh, a hypotenuse of x. So I put that in my calculator, sine inverse, okay, of 7 divided by 14, and I hit enter, and I should get 30 degrees. If you don't get 30, your calculator is in the wrong mode, or if you put something in incorrectly, please see Mr. Bloom about it. Okay, in this next one, I've got x here, and I've got 10 and 15. 15 is the hypotenuse. So I'm looking at opposite hypotenuse again, so it's inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to do the same thing, second inverse sine, 10 divided by 15, and I get 41.8. And that's my x degrees. Now, here in this next one, I got adjacent hypotenuse, and that adjacent hypotenuse is cosine. So I got cosine inverse, and I've got my adjacent over my hypotenuse. And give me my x, so I got inverse cosine of 3 divided by 5.5, and that's 56.9 degrees. In 27, 28, and 29, they give me um, a grid, and I can use distance formula, I totally can, but they gave me a grid. I'm going to make sure that I remind myself that I got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I can use Pythagorean theorem. So 
I'm going up by 1, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, so it's 5 squared plus 3 squared is equal to C. Let's find the square root. 25 plus 9 is going to give me 34. So I got the square root of 34. Okay, and they want me to do it to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to do it to the nearest tenth. And it's 5.8 is equal to C. Okay, or my distance here. Okay, that's my distance. Now, in this next one, I'm just going to sketch in my right triangle, but this one's trickier because it goes up by 2. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I got 10 here, 2, 4, 6, 8, and I got 8 there. So I've got 8 and 10. So I've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Do you notice that I was able to pay attention to my grid as I went up? i got to make sure I'm careful about that. And I got 8 squared plus 10 squared is equal to c squared. So this is 164 is equal to um, square root of 164 is equal to c. That's 100 plus 64. So I got 164 and find the square root and it's 12.8 is equal to C, or in this case, my distance D. My last one goes up by ones. That's three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. So I've got three squared plus five squared equals my C squared. And that's got nine plus 25 is equal to C. If I take the square root, hey, this is also the square root of 34. And that's 5.8. That's my distance that we're doing. C was just my placeholder. Okay, my last two problems, problem 30 and problem 31. Let's see if we can get there. BC, BC is 6, BC is 6, DC is 5, CE, the whole length, is 12. That means that's 7. And I'm supposed to find AC, the whole length. Okay, so let's do that this that way. I got the outside times the entire length, remember that's AC, is equal to my outside times my entire length. In this case, it's 12. Okay, well, right now I know that this is going to be um, X is 10. And I kind of got carried away there. I should finish. 6X is equal to 60 and X is 10. So that's the information I'm using for this answer up here. So let's group those together. Make sure you know that x is 10, or better yet, ac is equal to 10. Now, in the same picture, in the same picture we're going to use, um, the measure of angle c is 14, and the measure of ae, ae is 140, find bd. Well, if this is 14 degrees, and these are 14 degrees, I'm going to use big minus little. So I've got the measure of angle 1 is equal to 1 half my big minus little. And in this case, I've got 14 degrees, that's my uh, angle, and I've got 1 half of 140 minus x. So I got 28 is equal, and my multiplied by 2 on both sides, 140 minus x, and I'm going to subtract by 28 and 140. And I get 112 is equal to x. So my measure of arc BD is going to be 112 degrees. So those are my answers on those. Okay, I hope part two went well for you. Um, if you have any cl clarification questions, please see Mr. Bloom. Have a great day.